Okay, everybody, let me know if you can hear me. If you can, you know what that means. That means we're getting ready to kick off. As soon as I see it on the screen. Loud and clear. Thank you, Tracy. All right, guys, let's go. And hello, everybody. Welcome to Live from Lockdown. I thought this time I'd show you guys my desktop instead of uh, my face all the time. Although you'll get my face from time to time. I wish I could just spin it around like that. So anyway, how you guys doing? This week, it's week number 71. Can you believe that? Episode number 71. 71 weeks of this. This is probably not working like this, but hey, we'll just do it for this way. Anyway, but anyway, guys, hey, this is my new BenQ 31-inch, 32-inch uh, monitor. I figured I would just show it off to you guys. Freaking love it. I'm going to do a review on this soon. It's uh, actually the best monitor I've ever used. What monitors do you guys have? Anyway, continuing, and this is not a sponsored um, video, by the way. I just actually wanted to show you guys my workspace. So, yeah, there it is. Now you see it. This is where I work. My Wacom tablets here, Stream Deck, my main screen here, secondary screen over there, other stuff like that. Um, I see Rhett Brown has the same monitor. Awesome. That's great, guys. So anyway, what are we doing here? And, and uh, oh, Ben, has, uh, Ben, Bruce has two BenQ 27s. I have a BenQ uh, 27 over here and the 32 here. So um, it's huge um, and I like it. I actually, one of the things I like about using the huge display is sometimes when I'm editing video, I can do it all on one screen instead of spreading it around. And here I have a little, what is this? Just a cheap HP that I put vertically so I could put this chat on here. So this is how I chat to you guys. So anyway, this is a slightly different intro than we normally have. Good to see all you guys. So many of our regulars here. It's great to see you all here. So glad you could join us. We've got a fun episode this week. And I guess part of the reason showing my tech is because that's what we're doing this week. Spoiler alert, even though it's not really um, a secret. We're going to be doing uh, high tech design and compositing. It's going to be fun. I see Bruce is in the house. So any of you guys want to know, Bruce is our friendly uh, moderator and he is here to make sure everything runs smoothly, to yell at me when I forget to switch screens. Um, so at least if I forget to switch screens, at least I got this camera looking at something. So we got that going uh, for us. And by the way, guys, you want your drink orders, get them in with Bruce right now before he changes his mind and drinks them all for himself like he usually does. Fortunately, he can handle it, but you know what he's really good at? Spicy food. Bruce is the king, the OG of spicy food. Any of you guys want to have a spicy eating contest, he'll take you on. I'll put my money on Bruce. All right, guys, let's get started this week. I'm going to switch over to the desktop. So here we are on the desktop. So what we're going to be doing is... Something, you know, that I really haven't done with you guys, I don't know if I've ever done this on YouTube at all, is the high-tech kind of style. Uh, this is a style I love. Um, I definitely used to do more of it than I have been lately, and I want to get back into it again. I guess I kind of do it the cyberpunk kind of stuff, but it's just kind of fun, and um, there's a lot of things you guys are going to learn from this. But by the way, while I'm here, I just, let me get back on camera. I just want to thank you guys. We're celebrating something this week. 25 million views on our YouTube channel and I want to thank you guys because I know a lot of those views are you I know Ralph Ness now Ralph, blah, Ralph Nelson did a lot of those but I don't think you did all 25 million maybe half of them but anyway guys thanks uh, for support for what we're doing here as you know you know Photoshop Cafe we started on the website and of course the website is still going strong today um, it's doing better than ever uploading every tutorial that we put on YouTube and doing the written steps there, downloads and all that kind of fun stuff at photoshopcafe.com. But also we've been growing this YouTube channel and thanks to you guys for um, allowing us to uh, you know, celebrate 25 million views. That's something, that's amazing. I came from a country that had 5 million people, so that's five views for every person. 
and uh, there's New Zealand uh, Kiora to the Kiwis out there. All right, let's good on you, Colin. Hey, I like how you said that, Tracy. You got that spot on. Uh, thank you, Don, for the setup. It's fun. Um, anyway, so do I need all this? Yes, absolutely. Um, let's talk about the style here. Okay, so there's a couple of different ways that we can put it together. Now we get into the serious part. Um, so sometimes, for example, this one here, I called this Cafe Remix. And let me just zoom in a little bit. And I use this as my wallpaper for, <laughs> for the longest time. Let me get rid of the guides here. And so essentially what this was, was just an abstract shape in 3D and then just everything else, just messing around, which is what we're gonna do today. We're gonna be jamming in Photoshop and we're gonna do some fun stuff. Now, one of the places you can start is with just some random 3D and I have something there. There's something else I did. Um, maybe we'll start with something like this, but I wanna do something with photographs as well so we can kind of tie that in and get something that's kind of, you know, photographers can use as well. So I want this to apply to everybody. Um, so uh, Bruce could buy himself some nice, he's got some nice vintage guitars. I, I should sell my gear and buy vintage guitars, I think is what someone's saying. All right, so this is just basic 3D. I did this inside of uh, Cinema 4D. Unfortunately, I can't open Cinema 4D because all my licenses have expired, even the valid ones. So if you guys work for Maxon and you know anyone, contact me and I can be showing Cinema 4D on here. Until then, I cannot. Um, Photoshop, as you know, the 3D features are about to be retired. So some of those are working and some of them aren't. Um, one of the things I did notice is Adobe's going all out with the, um, let me go into Creative Cloud here done so what they're going into for 3d just to get through this really quick uh everything they're doing is moving to substance so substance stager i we, we talked about this last week what happened to uh dimensions if you still have dimensions you can still use it so don't get rid of it because it's gone and now they're replacing with substance stager and it looks they they want you to buy this um as a separate thing so um there's a lot you know the whole substance suite is actually really amazing hopefully i'll get to play with it maybe show you guys it at some point but once again stasia is the new version of dimensions don't get rid of your old version of dimensions because you can't download it anymore so don't throw it away now as far as 3d and photoshop um i'm gonna do a whole video on that maybe tomorrow or in the next few days so we won't even talk about that so let's let's look at the high tech design. Sometimes I start with just something like an abstract or sometimes we'll start with a photo. And what we're doing is just essentially throwing everything together, just mashing everything together to create some kind of a design. So what I thought we would do is I've got a photograph here that I shot last week. So just for you guys, because I know how much you love uh, mixing photography in here, because I want to make this, um, I want to make it relevant to everybody. So this is a photo I shot of Megan about a week ago. Actually, we did a whole shoot here. So you'll be seeing a lot more of the, you know, the different photos. This is the first time I'm actually showing anything from this shoot. And so why don't we use this and we're going to, it's kind of a cyberpunk kind of a theme. And then we're going to do this and we're going to like put some interface elements and stuff on here. So why don't we just edit this into Photoshop and um, let's just go ahead and just start here. And then we can do a little retouching, all that fun stuff. All right, so maybe the first thing I want to do is just cut her out. So we're going to go in here, choose select subject. My desktop is showing good. Uh, by the way, for those of you who are interested, I shot this on the Sony A1. This is my very first shoot that I've done on the Sony A1, first studio shoot. And so what I did is I just cut that out. Maybe I should just back off a sec here and we'll go into um, select a mask so we can just kind of clean this up a little bit. So I'm just going to give that a wiggle. And uh, this is just some basic things that I might do in here to get this going quickly. Radius, let's just set this to one. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on the cutout because this is really not the important thing in here. Um, and by the way, Megan here is Mike. Mike sometimes joins us. Uh, Mike Freeze, this is his cousin. And he set up the shoot. Thank you for that, Mike. All right, so we're going to output this to a new layer for layer mask. 
And what I want to do is just get some of the hair here. So I really wanted to do the ears, um, you know, for the kind of futuristic cyberpunk kind of thing. So she did the ears. I don't know what you call this, the buns or whatever, you know, kind of like Princess Leia, but in a different way. Um, I call them ears because they look like ears. All right, let's make sure we get her face in here, eyelashes, different stuff. All right, great. I think that's going to be close enough, and this is going to give us something to start with. So let's open. Now, this is going to be humongously high resolution because it's shot on the A1, which is a very high resolution camera. Uh, 50 megapixels. All right, so we're just going to clean this up. So we're just going to grab a brush with white. And we're just going to do some just basic retouching first. And then we're going to jump in here. Let me. If you see it's showing semi transparent and you're using a Wacom tablet, just make sure you turn transfer off. And in that way, I can just go in and paint these areas that are missing. And I'm not worried about even trying to get this perfect because we're going to be doing so much with this anyway. That's looking good. Kind of liking that. Let's go and do a little bit of retouching. Let's create, create a retouch layer and we'll just call this spot. And because uh, sometimes, you know, when you get this at an angle, um, you know, it can really start to show up things that necessarily shouldn't be shown. All right, let's go in here, take this hardness down just a little bit. And I just want to kind of clean up some of these edges now that we're zoomed in a little bit. And once again, we're not going to try and make this perfect. Oh, by the way, I was using gels. That's why the colors are so weird. I used two lights, one with a uh, blue gel, one with a pink gel. And I was using the um, strobes, studio flashes on here. All right, why don't we go ahead and let's just do some quick, let's just use the spot healing brush. Make sure we grab the new layer. It says spot, turn on sample all layers. And if we don't do that, you're not going to be able to uh, sample. It's not going to show anything. So I'm just going to just very, very quickly doing this. This is a little larger brush than I would normally use. I always make these disclaimers because, you know, I'm doing this live. So I don't want to spend a ton of time on any particular thing. And we're just going to zoom through here. Now, this is almost a case where I might even go crazy on this. And I could even use like frequency separation at a very amped up level and kind of turn her into an android that could be kind of fun now the reason i'm not doing frequency separation yet is we don't need to use it yet you know for this kind of work particularly when i'm using um a gels you know we don't have to go in and every time you do retouch you don't have to use frequency separation just going to say that because somebody's probably going to be like dude why aren't you using frequency separation we can, and we will. Let me just get rid of this first, just smoothing things off a bit. Almost there. And right now we're working in a six, uh, eight bit image, okay. So I'm not gonna spend, you know, a whole ton of time on retouching. I just wanna do this very, very quickly. Because we're going to be spending a lot of time on the background as well. But I don't know. Maybe we'll do an Android kind of thing. I, I'm starting to think, get that vibe. What do you guys think? Do you guys think we should make her a robot? The white buttons are distracting. Which white buttons? I don't see any white buttons. You mean on her? Yeah, there's no white button. You mean down here? We're not even going to be showing those. Um, I think that's what he's talking about. I don't know. All right, let's go back in here. Let's clean up some of this. All right, so what are, what are we doing here? We're just preparing our model. Just very, very quickly. Once again, for these kind of sessions where we're just jamming, don't look for perfection. Look for the technique. Because perfection takes more time than what we have and uh you know i would spend a lot of time like cutting this out i might spend you know 30 minutes just trying to get a perfect cut out which we're not going to do today all right cool all right something pretty good let's make her a robot someone likes that idea okay cool 
All right, so why don't we do maybe a quick frequency separation? So I'm just going to do something that I would encourage you guys to never do. I'm just going to merge that down. And I'm just doing that just for the sake of speed. So I'm just going to grab both of these. Put up. Control G. So what I did is I just duplicated it. I'm just going to do frequency separation FS. And um, we can take the bottom one. We're going to add a blur. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. I don't usually, just to be honest with you guys, um, usually do frequency separation at this point when I've already separated things. Usually I tend to do that more on the flattened image. So what we want to do for frequency separation is we're going to separate the uh, top and the bottom. We're going to change this into image, uh, apply image. And uh, the layer we want to do is a spot copy. You know, I've got other tutorials I'm sure I've done on working with frequency separation. Um, so I'm not going to go through and explain everything that we're doing in here right now. Subtract, that's what we want. And uh, yeah, check out my other tutorial. I've got tutorials on Photoshop Cafe on how to do this. And also here on YouTube. And I believe it's a linear light. Let's see if I get this right. There we go. And so if I turn this layer on and off. Okay, good. We're not really seeing a difference except for, you know, just some of the masking stuff, which we're not worried about. All right, so what we can do is we want to smoothen out the colors underneath. Um, this is how I like to do it. I just like to hit the Q for the Quick Mask tool. Let's grab a brush first. The Quick Mask works much better with a brush. Make sure we've got soft edges on this brush. Turn the hardness all the way down. And I'm going to hit Q for Quick Mask. And then I'm just going to paint on... Um, oh, class has got to go. Oh, sorry, Klaus. See you later. Dropouts, unfortunately. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm just painting the areas I want to smooth it over. So look, looking for those areas of transition, you know, where the colors are maybe just not super smooth. And I'm going to overdo this uh, for the sake of trying to make it look more like a robot. So wherever we see any kind of overlap there, I'm just going to select that down here. Well, let's just do the whole forehead area. So what I'm doing is I'm just making a selection, but rather than selecting and then, because a lot of people when they do frequency separation, they select a little bit and then they blur it and then they select another little bit and then they blur it. Um, so I'm just going to select the whole thing all at once and we're just going to blur everything that I want to blend. Now once again, if I was doing this not as a robot, I wouldn't be getting quite so carried away with this. Let's grab a little bit on the arm. It's going to blend it in. And I'm going to get all these transition areas. Is it going to work? I don't know. We'll find out. And uh, yeah, that should work. So we hit the Q key once again. And now this brings up the areas that we've selected. And then we're going to choose filter blur. We're going to do a, we could do a surface blur if you wanted as well, but we'll do a Gaussian blur. And notice what that does. Look at those areas underneath. We go before after see how it smoothens it out i'll take the radius to zero so you guys can see nothing happening and then generally speaking i'd give it a small amount like maybe there but we're going to be a more aggressive here because we're going for not realistic looking skin we're going to go a little bit further make it look a little bit robotic click ok Control d turns it off there we go now we're getting something that's starting to look like the before after all right cool all right, so we've kind of got our background there or our model. So we need something in the room. Uh, what do we want for the room? You know what I'm gonna do? Let's just go under window. And as you guys know, I've got these fun extensions I like. One of them is Free Stock Search Pro. Um, and let's just do a lab. Type in lab. And by the way, um, Adobe Stock now has a bunch of um, free images too. So there's a free collection on Adobe Stock. So what we're looking for is a photo in the background, but we're not too worried because we're just going to go nuts with it. But I'm just looking for something that has the right tones and everything. There we go. Something like this will probably work. So 
So we're just kind of downloading that and it should drop it into the image. Of course, it dropped it into that image. Let's go to our one we're working on here. And let's go like this, control T. So all I'm doing with this is once again, we're working a huge resolution, which is maybe a mistake for something like this. Um, I just want something in the background. All right, then we're just gonna crop this down. Let's do, I don't know. Let's not delete crop pixels so we can fix that later. And what I'm gonna do is just clear this. And let's see what this looks like for some kind of a background to get started. All right, throw that in the background underneath everything. Yeah, that's gonna work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this, just blur it to nothing anyway. So we're gonna blur, not even, you know, for realistic depth of feel, we're gonna just blur this just to get, literally just to try and get some kind of a shape or texture kind of thing going. What I'm thinking a little bit right now is like the matrix when you guys remember um, the control center when they went to Zion. I don't know if you guys saw the matrix. And then we're going to grab her. Whoops. Let's grab all the layers. Let's put everything together. Just control G for group. And we'll call this hero. And then we can move our hero over here. Awesome. All right. So what I want to do is maybe apply a curve to this. And so we're just kind of just getting started with this. So let's brighten things up a little bit. I want to do that. Let's just clip it. So now it's just affecting our hero there and nothing else. Awesome. And then we're going to do stuff of color overlays and all that kind of stuff in a second. All right. So why don't we start to do something with some interface elements? So let me just do this. I'm just going to hit control G and I'm going to call this plate. Bad spelling is good enough. Create a new layer. All right. So what I want to do is create some buttons or something that she's now going to be interacting with. So this is where we get into the high tech kind of part of it. And we're just going to grab this. We're going to grab the rectangle tool. And let's work on shape. And why don't we drag something out here? Now, I want to change the shape of this. So we're going to grab this and we're going to pull these in. Now, I, I want one corner to be straight. So I believe it's the Alt or the Option key. There we go. And then we can do each corner individually. So we got three round corners and a square corner. That fill should be something more like a white. And does that allow me to adjust opacity on that fill? I don't think so. So we're going to go for a white stroke. And doesn't let me do opacity. It does not. That's all right. No big deal there. What we'll do is we will hide the stroke on here. So let's make the stroke nothing. This is how we we'll do it. Let's change the blend mode to something like a light or a screen. Take the opacity down a little bit. All right, so what I'm doing is just creating one. Control J, I'm going to copy it. Take the opacity all the way up. And since it didn't allow me to play with the opacity on the stroke, no big deal. I'll just create two layers. And as we click away, what's that look like? Let's grab the top one, 100%. Let's put that into normal blending mode. Need to make that stroke a little bit bigger. Grab that and whoa, let's not go there. There we go. Click away. There we go. Now we're starting to get something that I want. Um, someone's saying, any, any thought of changing the name, live from lockdown, or do you live in a place that now has, well, people, some people in the world do run, so I'm born in another country i've lived in three different countries so i'm very internationally minded um so we have people from all over the world and uh 
currently Auckland, New Zealand is in lockdown. Some countries are, some aren't. But anyway, um, it's just a name. And at some point, maybe we will change the name of it. But right now, you know, the whole point of why we came together was when we went to lockdown. And uh, we haven't changed it yet. So uh, control G for group. But I wouldn't get hung up on the name. All right, so now I've created a group of these, and as we move them around, yes, we've got a little bit of transparency. That's what I'm looking for. All right, so I want to create, I want to now kind of, let's call this thing shape. And uh, we want to do some different things with these shapes. So I'm holding down the Alt or the Option key, and I'm dragging out one. Let's do a third one. Now, if we want to align these, we just hold down the shift key, select all three of them, and we're going to go under distribute. See the distances there? We want those to be the same. So if we click on a distribute, now it will distribute those at the same amount. Now, if I want to rotate these, control T, well, let's select just one, control T, and now I can rotate that. So see how we get that kind of interesting rotation going there? And maybe this middle one, I don't want that one to have the different corners. I'm going to hit the Alt or the Option key, and I'm going to give that one a rounded corner as well. No, let's not. Let's make that a square corner. And see what I'm doing? I'm building this little grid here. And so now we've got that one there. Um, and of course, I would need to do the same thing with those strokes. Uh, what do we got that one and then we've got the stroke there. Let's do the same thing with that stroke let's select our tool and um, Hit the alter option key. We're gonna pull that down and see what we're doing here guys We're creating this just kind of interesting. You know, those are things that you can do now You don't have to do all of that, but I just want to kind of show you. So we're going to build out something. So I want to duplicate all of these. And then control T will allow me to flip these. And we can pull those together. So I'm trying to build some kind of a, you know, I don't know, some kind of an interfacey thing. And so why don't we put all of these into one controlled group and we're going to call this one screen. So these would be some kind of screens. We want to put them at an angle. Control T and let's do distort. And uh, I want to get a little dimension going in here. So these can kind of be going off into the distance. So this is kind of like a, a HUD or a heads up display, something that she's going to be interacting with. And uh, why don't we move all of those over? And you know what I'm going to do is I'm just going to crop in a little bit tighter just because eh, we're a little bit limited in time. So I'm going to just, let's clear the ratio, aspect ratio. And so rather than create this huge overbearing kind of thing, let's go for a little tighter design in here. And because delete crop pixels is off, we can always go back at any time and expand this later. Um, all right, so here we go there. So what I want to do here is make it look like they're interacting with this one. So see how that one's just kind of there? So control J, uh, let's do control J a couple of times. So what we're doing is making that one a little bit stronger. I'm going to select them all, hit control E, and what that's doing is merging those together. Let's do a couple more of these. And um, I'm going to right click and I'm going to rasterize this. So um, cancel. All right, looking good. Let's duplicate one more time. Control J. There we go. And I'm going to take the one underneath and I want to make it look like it's glowing. So we're going to choose filter blur. And we're going to give it a little bit of a Gaussian blur. A Gaussian blur, however you call it. And see what we're doing here is we are doing the blur. And um, here we go. Control E. And yes, guys, you know, at some point we are going to change the name from Live from Lockdown, just so you know. Um, here we go. Let's 
So we're giving this a little bit more of a blur. So it looks like she's interacting with this area a little bit more. And why don't we go in under the effects and we're going to give this an outer glow. And let's do this. There we go. So now we're getting something going here. I'm going to take the fill opacity down. And see what that does is the fill. Let me just show you the difference. Opacity, if I take opacity down, it takes the opacity to that whole layer. Fill opacity takes the layer down, but allows the layer style to show through. So then we've got more of a transparent kind of a HUD kind of thing going on here. All right, so that's kind of part of what we're doing. We've got a lot of like overlays and stuff that we're going to do soon, which the stuff's just going to pop. Why don't I do a little bit of that right now? Let's just create a layer on top. And since we're doing these colors, let's just put a little bit of color in here. I'm gonna grab the blue. And I wanna do a blue to transparent gradient. So let's grab the gradient. Foreground to transparent. And let's grab a little bit of that going across there. Change the blend mode. So now we're starting to get a little bit of kind of color light and screen i'm kind of liking screen quite a lot soft light it's kind of interesting too let's do a little soft light for now i think it's got a kind of a cool kind of a vibe to it and let's grab another layer and let's go for the opposite let's go for that pinkish color and um yeah that'll probably work Dun, 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 dun. What are you guys thinking? Overlay, soft light, hard light, what's working for you guys? Let me know in the comments. I'm thinking I'm kind of liking the soft light. And I'm going to take it down a little bit, so we're just going to go just... To, I want to get just to, like the light is kind of glowing from one direction, which is going to give us more of a reason for this kind of going like that. Um... That looks like you guys are coming up with some good names there. Colin's Workshop would be fun. I was actually... Put your suggestions in there. What should we call this when we change the name? What do you guys think? My thought is... Um, I was thinking of just calling it the Cafe. Um, or Photoshop Cafe Live. But what do you guys think? You think the Cafe would be a good name for the live stream? Let me know. So what I'm going to do here... Is I want to kind of soften her a little bit. Oh, we're still going to do a little bit of Android work, so I'll, I'll leave that for a second, um, and we'll, we'll we'll look at that. Why don't I take the Properties Inspector, throw that over to the other side, then we can see our screen a little bit better. There we go. All right, now I want to show you another tool that I just love for these kind of things. This is the Polygon Lasso tool. So let's go up under here, and I'm going to create a shape, and we're going to call this Things. I have very elaborate names for these. Um, and this is where we're going to put things in here. The Cafe Club is yeah, a good one. Although I don't know, is the club kind of like, you know, not really a very current term though? Is there anything, um, you know, because I think like, you know, Mickey Mouse Club and stuff is, I feel like it's kind of an outdated term. Um, so if we work with this and I hold the shift key, what it's going to do is it's going to constrain this to 45 degree increments. And this works really cool because when I do that, it enables me to create these kind of cool, futuristic, interfacey kind of things. I don't know if interfacey is a word, but see, you, you guys are probably used to this kind of stuff. You've seen it, you know, it kind of gives it that vibe. So I'm just going to fill this, this with white for now. And, you know, we we'll work on a couple of different ones. So let's grab this once again. And maybe this time we'll start from here. And this is going to be almost like you've seen this on the, you know, the lower thirds on sports and, and different things like that. It's pretty commonly used. Um, and I'm just going to grab a shade of gray just so we can kind of see what's going on. So I'm just kind of building some of this right now. Uh, these are different layers. Let's build another layer. And uh, this kind of gives us the, the this cool kind of vibe. Maybe we'll have a little bit stick out there, go out. And I think you guys kind of see what I'm 
trying to do with this. You know, you'll see this a lot, you know, the, the kind of Terminator and stuff like that, or, you know, anything pretty much these days, sci-fi kind of thing. All right, so we've got kind of that shape I'm kind of building up. Let's drop the big shape to the bottom. Maybe put that one underneath. You guys can see what I'm starting to do with this. Is we're building something. You know, it's kind of fun. We can go along the bottom. And we called it Things. Because it's called Things, we can look at different blending modes with these things. See if any of these blending modes make sense. You know, I'm liking what we're getting there with the soft light. Maybe the hard light even. What do you guys think? Light from the cafe. That's a good one, David. I like that. I just want to take the white and maybe use a different blend mode on there. Yeah, there we go. So now it's starting to work. So you guys have seen these kind of shapes, right? So this is essentially how you do it. So we've got those going. Now, one of the things that can look really cool is if I control J and copy this and I rasterize it, meaning I just flatten all of this into one thing. I could put this underneath everything and then uh, maybe put it completely underneath. Let's just make it white. So I'm just going to go here. It's just a quick way to make this white. There's levels, control alpha levels. And the reason I'm going to do this is I'm just going to do a blur, filter blur. So as you can see, some of this is conceptual. Uh, some of these are steps. I know I'm going super fast. I apologize. Um, just, you know, the replay will be live after this. So you can slow it down and look at the stuff that, you know, really interests you. And that will enable you to go in and kind of just, you know, say, hey, I kind of like that, but I didn't like that. So you know what I like? I like the glowing edges, but I don't necessarily like it in the middle. So one of the things I can do is I can take this layer, I believe, and why don't we turn it into a smart object? And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make the selection around it here, and then I'm going to create a mask. Now what's happening when we do that is that mask, let's invert it, should be hiding the rest of it and just kind of showing the edges. Great. Now I'm going to click on the properties and we're going to take the density because now it's just going to let, allow me to just kind of allow a little bit of that to kind of show through. And you can kind of see where we're going with this, right? All right. So there's another thing I want to add on here, which gives it this kind of fun kind of thing. And let's do another one. And we're going to call this one text. So we're going to do tiny text. So when you see these sci-fi kind of things, the um, tiny text is a feature. So we're going to grab the type tool, horizontal type tool. And let's create a block of text. This will give us paragraph text. Now, when we do this, it's automatically going to fill us with some placeholder. But you can also go into type and choose paste lorem ipsum, and that'll give us more. And what you want to do is select a whole ton of this. We're going to go light. And I want to go white. So we're going to choose the color here. We're going to choose white. And I want to make the text tiny, like unreadable. It doesn't have to be readable at all. Let's just uh, click on this tool here. It's going to open up the preferences for type. This is the letting. I'm just going to set it to auto for now. And I want to see what's going on. So if you can control H, what it will do is it will hide the selection, even though the selection is still active. And now this is going to enable me to move things around and preview what's happening without that big block. So I'm going to make this very, very small type, but I want to make the letting bigger. So sometimes the higher letting, smaller type can look really good. And if I hit control H, we'll bring back to that selection again. See? So what I'm going to do is I want to duplicate it. So control C for copy, go to the end, control V will paste it. Select the whole thing, control C, go to the end, control V will paste it. And then the reason I'm doing it this way is rather than having to paste it like 10 million times, I can just go with the biggest selection that I made. All right, so we've got all this type. And, um, you know, why don't we use this? We're going to grab it so we can use it again. 
So this is where you want to be using things like Creative Cloud Libraries. So when we're in the library, I could create a new library um, and we're going to call it Tech. And then these things I start to create, I can reuse. So let's import. Let's just add all. And then so the things I've been creating here are now being added in there so I can reuse them. So what I'm doing is I'm making this tiny and this is just a bunch of text. It doesn't have to mean anything. This is the cool thing about it. Um, we can go to different blend modes and see if it makes it look more interesting. And hit the Alt or the Option key, we can drag out copies of this. Now, when we zoom in, then we could start to uh, make some of this match. I didn't want warp. Why did I choose warp? I wanted distort. Before I do, let me right click on here and rasterize it. There we go. Control T for free transform. Right click gives you all these controls. And one of the ones we're going to choose here is distort. And I'm just going to bring it in here. And we're going to populate this with some stuff. Now there's so many things you guys could do in here. You just really want to use your imagination for this. I'm just going to do just some basic text for this one. Then we could do the one next to it. Why don't we grab type again? Just drag it out. And this time, I don't want to use as much type. So I'm just going to grab the type tool. And um, go in there. What happened there? Did I drop that on the other layer? Nope. Let's grab up where it says text. Oh, there we go. Text there. And we're going to grab that. And what I want to do here is... edit contents and this is going to bring me up to this window here where I can go in and I can edit the type so if I want less type I can do that or if I just want to select some of the type why don't I just select some of that type let's go back in here let me close that down there we go don't save there we go and what I've done here is I've just selected some of that and now I'm just going to do a smaller one and I'm going to paste this in here and do something like this. Once again, rasterize. I'm not going to do um, any more of these after this. I just want to show you guys how I would do it. And then when you start to, you know, you can do multi-column text. You can do different things in here. You can do shapes. I'll show you some cool shapes in a second. Although we already did some shapes, I guess. You know, we can start to do that. Then we can do things with circles and different symbols. Let's have a look at some symbols. Let's go under here. We're going to choose custom shape tool. Let's do the legacy shapes. And what do we got here? Ornaments. Anything in here that's interesting? Objects. Ornaments. So we get all these kind of things. These are this is a good place we can use some of these symbols. Um, let's do the nuclear symbol. I think that, that's going to be cool. Okay, so now I've selected it. Let me click on there. All I need to do on the new layer. Let's create a new layer. And I can do as a shape. I just ah, did I really do that? I meant to select that one. Where are we? There we go. And let's just drag out here. There we go. Holding down the shift key. I've created that. Let's change the fill to white. You know, and then you could put that in one or you could put it down here. All kinds of things we can do with this. Drop it down to 30%. And see what we're doing is essentially all we're doing here, guys, is we're just layering stuff on here. And this is how we start to build this kind of a look. And, you know, as we start to layer more stuff, it's going to start to look cooler. Let's create a new layer. And, it, and of course, we can reuse stuff. One of the things I saw in here looked kind of fun was this one. Let's grab that. And um, let me just 
track that down a little bit. Let's drop something up here. It's always going to be fun. Uh, let's just do some of the blend mode. We've got our radio uh, nuclear thing here. There we go. It's kind of fun. You know, so you could start to put that in there. Rasterize. And this would also be a good time when we could grab other kind of objects, other 3D objects. Um, and we could also do some different things here with uh, overlays. And, and we'll drop some of those in right after this. And the other thing, this would be a good place to use, um, you know, filters like virus effects. Because, I mean, at this point, what we're doing is we're essentially just throwing everything at this. Anything that's kind of futuristic. And see what we're doing, we're starting to build this up. I'm going to go there and change the blend mode of that, see if anything happens. There we go. Um, I'm going to hit Control i to invert that. You know, you get, you get the general idea and see how we're starting to build things up. Now, let me show you something. If we wanted to make something like, um, yeah, we've definitely got an outline there I need to clean up. Let's go down here. Let's go down to the uh, hero. Let's pop that open. And one of these is getting a little weird. Is it that? Yeah, the frequency separation. Yeah, this is why, guys, when you do frequency separation, you don't do it on cutout image, but we can fix that. We'll contract. So we just choose image, select, contract. So as I said before, normally when I do this, I um, went too far. Select image, contract. Let's do maybe one pixel. Uh, that's why, you know, a lot of the time you do the cutouts afterwards. So Command Shift I, and then what I'm going to do on that layer is I'm just going to hit Delete, and that's going to help remove that outline. I can also do it this way. Control Alpha Levels. Now we have to do it for Mask. Mm. Let's contract it again. Select Image, Modify Contract. So this is what happens if it's gone too much, Command Shift I for invert again, hit delete, Control D, it's getting better. Maybe one more pixel. Select, modify, contract by one more pixel, Command Shift I, and this time let's see what's going on. Hit Control H to hide the edge, and then hit delete, and then watch those edges each time I hit delete. It's getting better. There we go. Yeah, that looks better. Great. All right, so what I'm going to do with our hero is let's do a duplicate of the whole thing. Control J will duplicate her entirely. And why don't I change the blend mode of this to overlay? And we're going to give it a blur. Let me. I want to flatten that, so I'm just going to create a new layer. Select both the layers. Control E. Great. Now we're going to put this in overlay blend mode again. Let's try this again. Filter blur. Apply a Gaussian blur. And we're just going for kind of a soft kind of a look here. Great. That's what I'm looking for. And. I want to make this brighter. Good, good, good. And now what I'm going to do is take the opacity all the way down to zero. Because clearly it's too much. And just bring a little bit in. There we go. So I'm trying to make it look a little bit brighter in here. And let's also jump on this curve. Let's also brighten things up a little bit. 
because we're you know obviously that's too much but we'll fix it in a sec and then we can take the opacity down on that curve and just kind of dial it in there we go so I'm just trying to dial it in a little bit brighter you know because it's a brighter environment and clearly you know we've got more we can do with the color why don't we do a hue saturation adjustment on here I want to take saturation down just a little bit just on our model there we go starting to look a little bit better and you know we're going to put some glows and all that kind of fun stuff on in a second all right so let's have a look at how would we put a panel like say i wanted to put a panel on her arm how would we do that it's actually quite easy what i'm going to do is create a new layer and then we want to do the shape of the panel that we're going to create so why don't we use our polygon lasso tool and i'm going to create a panel Let's go with that kind of high tech kind of shape thing we were doing before. And then we're going to go here. So that's going to be the shape. So let's add a stroke around it. So it's going to give it an outline. Let's give it three pixels. It's probably more than I need, but let's just do that so we can see it. Awesome. All right, so let's warp it. Control T, right click and choose warp. And if you guys watched this tutorial this last week you'll see how we can use this warp tool I, the one I dropped on dropped this tutorial on Tuesday so I just want to kind of get this kind of wrapping around her maybe that 3x3 three three grid was not a good idea let's undo that let's not do that just yet control Z for undo let's go back to the default there we go there we go that's better so now i'm just kind of warping this to fit her body keep the grids as simple as you can like once you start complicating the grid as you saw it starts to get a lot harder to do this let's create it which kind of goes with the curvature of her arm a little bit there we go so I know this is different are you guys enjoying this um, let me know if you guys are enjoying this at all all right so control J will duplicate this white so here's a little trick from back in the day control I will make it black so if I want to make this look like we've got some kind of a panel in here and we want to add depth to it, take that thin white one, put a black one over the top, and then all it's a matter of doing now is just nudging it over and down and look at this. Now we start to get dimension. So now we've got a panel. See that? That can be opened guys like that so if we want to create more panels that's exactly how we do it and then of course you know we could go into that panel and we could you know change the color of it if we whatever we wanted so this is the kind of you know now we're starting to get into a little bit of cyberpunk kind of stuff um, maybe we'll put a little little one on a cheek here or maybe her control center goes where they put her um, her microchip in there so I'm gonna go above there and let's just do a square one this time so let's just create a square edit stroke let's do it white control D once again right click and this time let me just distort it it's gonna be quicker to distort this before we go in and warp it 
So just kind of showing a different way to achieve the same result. And uh, just looking for the angle just till it feels about right. So we're looking for the angle. Okay, now we want to warp it. Right click, choose warp. And now we can start to curve it. Let's pull out a little bit of a curve there. There we go. Same thing over here. Let's drag that out a little bit. And so this is another place, guys, where you can use this warp tool. And um, it's just fun. These are just fun things to do. Is this useful? I don't know, but it's fun. Maybe a little too much on that. And see what we're doing here. We're just kind of creating this panel. And control J, control I flips it over. And we just nudge it over. Now we've got another panel here. And if it's too much, which I think it is, let's take the opacity down a little bit. There we go. See how it looks more realistic now? Let's go in there, drop the opacity down on that a little bit. There we go. Now we've got a little more realism. And, you know, you can do all the fun things you do with those. Um, same thing here. I should probably drop the opacity down, make it look more realistic. Um, now, I just want to do something like completely over the top of this whole thing. So let's just create a new layer. And sometimes the fun part of this is just going crazy with textures and things like that. So I'm going to grab the gradient tool. Let's go under the basics. Blues, purples, legacy is what I want. Legacy, there we go. Metals. All right, so let's just apply this. And notice what I'm doing is I'm just using this one. And if we put this into like, I don't know, overlay mode, I'm just basically creating some texture or something like that. And then we can change the blend mode of this. And see how we can start to add stuff that just starts to look, you know, just interesting. And so, you know, this is just kind of jamming. That's what we're doing now. We're just jamming, trying some different things. Drop the opacity down. And now we're just kind of building up visual interest. Control J, let's duplicate it. And why don't we flip it? Flip it horizontal. And maybe put this one into a different blend mode. lighter color drop it way down and see what we're doing here is we're starting to add this stuff on top why don't we put a gradient across it linear gradient and we're going to do something like this i don't know drag it down that way actually i want to go for the linear And let's put some color into this. By the way, Control U or Command U brings up the uh, color here. Now we have to lighten it to get color in. Let's play around with the hues. Get more saturation. There we go. It's kind of cool. Try different blend modes. And see what starts to happen. We start to get these cool different things start to happen. Happy accidents. You know, we're basically looking for happy accidents at this point. Control J, let's copy that. Control T, we're going to flip it around 180. Drag it at the bottom. Let's try some different blend modes. Go for something different. That's kind of interesting. All right, so now what I want to do is I'm just going to take this whole thing and I want to just kind of create command shift, you know, all the things and in the E key. So I'm creating a composite layer on top. And then we're going to go into camera raw. And let's give it some contrast. See if it looks good with more contrast or does it look good with less contrast? I think boost the contrast a little bit. Let's punch the exposure up. 
I'm going to pull the highlights down a little bit, shadows up, because I want to kind of flatten it out a little bit. So the whites. I'm going to roll off the blacks so I don't really want any blacks in there. Like, get rid of the shadows. Definitely don't want any of that. Maybe dehaze reverse. Dehaze, add a little bit of haze. Take that saturation down. Add a little more vibrance. Okay, so here we go. We're getting something a little bit different here. So let's click OK. And see what we're starting to build up here. We're starting to build up something that's looking interesting. So why don't I duplicate that? Control J. And why don't we apply some Boris effects? Let's go into the filter here. We're going to use Boris effects optics. I think you guys are familiar with this. Because what I want to do is grab a nice lens flare. Oh, license expired. Okay. Um, oh, remind me later. Um, okay, I guess we'll come back to this. And I think it's just because I updated Photoshop and I had not done the license. Okay, cancel. We won't be using Boris Effects in there right now. But maybe next week we will. Um, I know we talked about doing some more stuff with virus effects and let me know if you guys want to see that. There's other ways we can do this. Let's just go into filter. We're going to choose render. Now let's do a lens flare in here. Maybe drop it right on there. And I'm going to change the type of lens flare so it's not apparently obvious that I'm doing a Photoshop lens flare. Because sometimes that can just be, you know, cliche if it's overdone. Drop that in there. Play around with the opacity. It's kind of looking nice. And the other thing we can do here is go under the library. Where is my library? Yep, that's the nice thing about live. If anybody thinks that I'm pretending to be live, well, there's your proof I'm not. <laughs> so I've got something here with some textures and stuff that I downloaded before. And of course, you guys can grab textures everywhere. Um, I think I called it overlays. Yeah, and there's some just different textures and stuff. Another place, as you guys know, I love to use is Design Cuts. They have some great overlays and stuff like that. Adobe Stock. Uh, look at the different, you know, different free collections. There's a lot of places you guys can grab these kind of overlays and things like that. Um, you know, you can get paid ones, you can get free ones. You know, they're all they're all wonderful. Let me just rearrange my workspace. There we go. That's better. And let's look at some different blend modes here. There we go. So what I'm doing here is I'm doing something like this. It's going to hide the darks, allow the lights to show through. It's kind of cool. Maybe I'll... What else we got here? I kind of like that. And if you guys want to just kind of blend it in, create a layer mask, black to white gradient, and we can just blend that in. What do we got here? Oh, change it back to normal blend mode. Get that way. There we go. And now you can start to kind of just add some of those things in. There's different ways we could do it. Alt or Option will duplicate that. And another way we could do it is just go into Normal and we can do the blending options and hide the darks by just dragging it like that. Advanced Blending. It's another way of just kind of getting things to just kind of show through. And then also combine that with some kind of a blend mode. There we go. And we're getting something else that's kind of interesting. So, you know, you can start to do these. I don't think I like both of them. It's too much. So we just do the one at the bottom. Let's grab another texture. And uh, we're almost done, guys. I just want to just kind of do a couple more little things to this just for fun. Let's take this smoke in the background that's very cool looking. Um, let's flip it around this way. And let's go just huge. And if you want to hide black, well, that's easy. We just go into these blending modes and screen usually should hide black quite nicely. 
take it to the top. I'm going to have this at an angle. So it's kind of coming through. Nice. Control U. And why don't we colorize this? Let's make it bluish. Control J will double it up. And we can start to do that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, we're getting near. Let's just drop in some type here and we'll do something. What should we call this one, guys? Um, let's just call it the Cafe Live, which is kind of what we're doing right now. Let's go for bold. I don't know if Proxima Nova is going to work, but you definitely want to do some kind of a sans serif font for this kind of thing because you're looking for something that's more futuristic so blocky kind of gives us that kind of look and what I'm doing is hitting the alter the option key and using the arrow and it enables me to adjust the um, the, the, the letting Um, thinking maybe something like that and then what I'm going to do here is let's do a outer glow and what I want to do is create a white outer glow and then we're going to go under the blending options and we're going to turn the fill opacity down a little bit there we go so see how that outer glow is kind of showing so we're getting a kind of an outline kind of thing. Now we're getting into kind of, you know, almost like rave territory. I'm going to pop that behind her head. Oh, it's probably not going to let me do that because of all this. Okay, so there's another way we can do this. If I wanted to you know cut that out what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go down to where a head is control click and that will give me a selection there and then I can use that for masking here so I'm gonna create a mask hide that and then what we do is just control I we're gonna invert that and see how it's kind of getting it behind her if I want to fix that glow we're just gonna to have to create layers so I'm gonna separate this no, that's not going to get us there. Probably would need to go in and mask that so I don't get the glow around her head. But, uh, you know, you guys are getting a general idea, right? And then we could go with that one over the top. What happens if I invert that? Rasterize it. And change the blend mode. Actually, you know what? I kind of almost like just doing that as an outline. What do you guys think? I think it almost looks kind of cool just as an outline. Uh, let's try something else though. Let me take that, unlink that. Let's grab that type. Let's see if we can bigger. A little smaller. Take the one under here. So as you can see, we're just kind of experimenting now. And, you know, making that one just a little bit bigger, pull it down. Change the opacity on it to like three, there we go. And so here we go. So you've seen these kind of effects before and this is essentially how they create it. Just a lot of playing around. Uh, so yeah, guys, do me a favor. If you're getting any fun out of this at all, smash that like button into dust. All right, so why don't we apply a curves over the whole thing and see what we can do here. So now we're applying a curves. We're going to go down. We could see how we can really just change the whole style of this. I almost like this very light, airy kind of look we're getting though. It's kind of fun. So 
So it's a different kind of a style, right? It's a very, very soft kind of a style. Screen. And now, of course, we can adjust the opacity. So we're going for really just kind of a super light washed out kind of a style like that. I think it's kind of fun. Um, the other way we could do this, though, is we could split that. So what if we were to do something like grab the polygon lasso and hold down the shift key, 45 degrees, and then we put a mask in here. And now see what we're doing. We're starting to do a little bit more. We can invert that control. I, I kind of like what's happening there. And see what we're doing here is we're going for something like just completely different again. And let's go back into that curve. I want to do something with the color. Let's make this more blue. See what I'm doing there is I'm just pulling this up really high in the blues. Let's reduce the reds. See so what we're doing now is um, I don't know if I want to bring it too much. Oh yeah, maybe a little bit into that area. Okay. Oh, that's looking good. But you know what I want now is I want little speckles. I feel like it needs some kind of a stardust, fairy dust kind of a thing. So we've got a snow overlay. Why don't we throw that on there? And see what happens if we take the snow overlay, change it to screen mode. And I'm going to drag it down here. And what I did is, let's see if that works. Let's not do it like that. Okay, so I'm going to take the snow overlay and I'm just going to start to duplicate it because I want a ton of this snow. So I'm going to hit the Alt or the Option key and this is going to give me lots and lots and lots of this snow. Awesome. Now let's go back to that little mask here because I think I nudged... No, no, that's where it's supposed to be. All right, so what I want to do now is I want to make all of these. I'm just going to select them all. Control G, put those in a group. And I just want the snow inside the blue section. So control click on our mask. Where is our mask there? Nice. And then we're just going to create a layer mask. Gets rid of it outside of there. And now it's only showing in there. There's some other speckles there that are appearing and that's probably from something else. Yeah, because that mask is definitely, yeah. So there's our snow. It's definitely staying contained within there. And now we're getting something, you know, I don't know, it's something different. So now this is just affecting, see what we did is just affecting that area there. Let's go back into the curve again. And this is the nice thing about working with curves is that they are non-destructive. So we can go back and we can change these anytime. All right. I'm going to create another composite layer on top. So hold down shift command option, you know, just everything and the E key. And this is going to give us another layer on top. And let's see what happens if we try blending mode. And this is just kind of fun. Like sometimes you can just experiment and you think, okay, I'm done. And then you just keep experimenting with different, you know, different blending modes, get some different results. Let me invert that. Sometimes it's interesting to do that is invert it. And look at this, we get some different colors all together. And let's create a mask. And I am going to grab a circle. Let's do the option key, do it from the middle, shift. So now we've got a circle in the middle and there's all kinds of things we could do with this. You 
know, see what we're doing here. We're just experimenting with that. I almost like that. And then the nice thing about this is, you know, you can unlink it. You can move it around. I'll probably see edges. And that's okay. You know, so you could go around. You could start to do other things with this. See what we're doing? Start to mix it with some of the other areas. Like maybe right there. Uh, you know, just different different things to experiment with. So you guys can see, you know, the kind of stuff you can do with that. And then if you don't like that mask everywhere, just grab a brush. Just grab, grab a black brush. Or a white brush. White brush goes back. Black brush shows everything else. Let's go here with the black brush. And then we're just kind of blending that in. So I don't know if you guys like that or not. But that's, uh, you know, just another option. So anyway, guys, <laughs> I know we did, um, you know, a lot of kind of just playing around here, just kind of having fun creating this high tech kind of a, a style. So, um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know it was something completely different than what we normally do. Um, if you liked it at all, do me a favor, smash that like button or just gently press it. <laughs> Whatever you want. Tracy likes the circle. Okay, we'll put the circle back in there. And you guys get it. You can just keep going all day long, just experimenting, trying different things. And um, you want that futuristic look. This is this is essentially, you know, you've seen it on record covers. I mean, this could be an album cover. Um, and essentially, this is what it is. It's just layering, trying things, textures, flares, lights, you know, um, smoke, you know, just dropping different things in their shapes and uh, text you know the tiny text of course works great one thing i do want to do on here that i just think is looking awful is there's that text um yeah i would have probably moved the tiny text over to the other side but you know that's fine it works for now i think you guys get the idea right you get the general idea you've seen these kind of designs that's how it happens so anyway guys if you're new here, thanks for joining us. Uh, hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications, and then you won't miss any of our tutorials. Um, don't forget, every Tuesday I do a new tutorial, and um, and I hope you guys enjoyed seeing my workspace with my BenQ 32-inch. Um, I am loving it, and I'm going to do a review on this monitor soon. I've just had it for a few weeks, and um, yeah. Anyway, guys uh thanks for joining us good to see so many regulars there we've got david rayal dojo tracy uh hannah Orcapist. um of course we mentioned bruce we've got chris bacon good to see you video tt it's 2024 and it's lunch i'm starving Orcapist, good to see you jason ritter stephen lovejoy michael richardson uh cornell ralph michael uh don haynes rod shelley philip Gregg. Laura Tech, good to see you again, Don Haynes, Orcapes, I said already, Photo Maker, Hannah, good to see you, Rael, great to see you again, Polka Dot Studios, uh, Betty Lynette, Colin Little, um, we've got Ron, David Holstock, Rolf, Stanby, good to see all of you guys once again, uh, regulars in the house. So, next week, um, we'll be back, same bat time same bat channel uh please don't forget boris next week hana if nothing else i will have the uh license thing fixed so i can um at least run a couple of filters and if not maybe we'll do a special we'll see how it goes um we'll figure it out guys so anyway thanks for watching see you all next week